Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you're here in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not and, as uh, simple you know, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Ram fans, this is Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders, we're just longtime fans who love. Talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 410 of Rams Up. We're going to get to some news and notes, and then I'm going to have a player focus on our new cornerback, Tredavious White, free agent signing after he was released by the Buffalo Bills. Hey, episode 410, let's talk about a player who wore number 10. Episode 310, we talked about Mark Bulger. This time, we're going to talk about Pharaoh Cooper, the wide receiver, kick returner. 5'11", 208 pounds out of North Carolina, and then the University of South Carolina. Drafted by the Rams in the fourth round of the 2016 draft, and he was quite a kick returner. During his Rams career, 39 punts and 61 kickoffs returned. One of the kick returns, a 103-yarder for a touchdown, and he was a Pro Bowl kick returner in 2017. Unfortunately, that was the same year in that playoff game against Atlanta. He had a bad day. He had a very, very bad day. Muffed a punt that bounced off of teammate Blake Countess in the first quarter, led to a Falcons field goal, and then he was stripped on a kick return, led to a Falcons touchdown. And the Rams ended up losing that game, a game they probably were primed to win. Sean McVay's first playoff game. And I got a trivia question for you as well. Now we're going to be shifting to draft talk. So I have a draft trivia question. In 2000, the Rams used the 31st pick overall, first round pick, on a running back out of Arizona, despite the fact that Marshall Falk was still on this roster. Who was this running back? Answer at the end of this episode. Before we get to our player focus, getting to know Tredavious White, our new cornerback, three notes on players I wanted to share with you. Our old buddy Josh Reynolds has signed with the Denver Broncos. Got a nice contract there. Two years, $14 million. Really sad to see how his years in Detroit ended. He's a good receiver. Hopefully he bounces back with the Broncos. Jadavian Clowney a guy that I had penciled in as a possible addition for the Rams at the edge, has signed with the Carolina Panthers. I don't think the Rams really made a push for him at all, but I thought it might have been a good move. Probably out of their price range, though. 
And Brandon Ayuk making some noise over there with the 49ers. He wants to get paid. He wants to get paid badly. That's a situation Ram fans need to monitor. He's an important part of that offense. And I sense that he's becoming unhappier by the day. Ayuk really voicing his displeasure on Twitter. Kind of cryptic, but the message is pretty clear. No more talking. Time to pay me. And you know what? I can't help myself. It's time to bring back my fearsome four questions. Overdue for one of these segments. Let's get to it. Fearsome question number one. Which tight end will lead the Rams in yardage this year, receiving yardage? And you know what? I'm starting to think it's going to be a three-horse race. And this occurred to me today because Tyler Higbee shared something on social media implying that his rehab is coming along, working at it every day, and he's going to come back strong and help this team get back to the Super Bowl and win a championship. What a great attitude. Colby Parkinson and Davis Allen are going to have something to say about that. I think all three of these guys are going to contribute significantly this year. It's just a question of when Tyler Higby comes back and who is going to be the main guy in 11 personnel Colby Parkinson or Davis Allen, man, you know what? I'm going with Colby Parkinson as the Rams' leading receiver from the tight end position in 2024. Here's some question number two. Who will be the Rams' backup quarterback in weeks one and two? Remember, Jimmy G under suspension, dresser win, Stetson Bennett. I think it's going to be Stetson Bennett. I think he has taken steps in the right direction and good for him. So glad to hear it. I'm betting on Stetson at this point. Doesn't mean he's going to play, but he will be suiting up weeks one and two. Here's some question number three. Opening day, first play from scrimmage for our defense. The Rams run five DBs out there or the first play they do run five DBs out there. Who will they be? Who are these five guys going to be? And the more you look at this group, the more questions you have. You think you have an answer to one question and it opens up a couple of more. But this is what I'm rolling with. Darius Williams and Tredavious White on the outside. Quentin Lake in the slot slash star, whatever you want to call it. And Russ Yeast and Cameron Curl on the back end. And I don't feel strongly about this one either. Could very well see Kobe Durant in the slot and Quentin Lake at safety instead of Russ Yeast. But I'm sticking with my first answer. Darius Williams, Tredavious White, Quentin Lake, Cameron Curl, and Russ Yeast. And that's not a bad group at all. Actually, four of those guys are outstanding. And Russ Yeast, up and down, has his moments though. And for some question number four, Marshall Falk was saying that Aaron Donald is going to pull a Tom Brady and come back, a team in need of a defensive tackle, making a playoff run, bring Aaron Donald back, and that could very well be the Rams. So the question is, will Aaron Donald ever play another down in the NFL? And the answer is no. Not feeling it for Aaron Donald It's a little bit different with a quarterback position. It's such an important position. Defensive tackle is just different. I don't think a team is going to reach out to Aaron Donald to try to fill a void like that and pay that kind of money. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Rams bring him back in week 10 or 11. Convince Aaron to have another go at it for another Super Bowl. I don't know. Just not feeling it. My answer is no. I got through these four questions and... You know what? I could go 0 for 4 on these very easily, but those are my answers. And for now, I'm sticking with them. Back in a second with our player focus on our new cornerback, Tredavious White. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal making across sports, media, and entertainment. And that is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and, not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more know, doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. 
Well, we all know the Rams signed a new cornerback, a very good one at that, assuming he's healthy and ready to go. I think he is. Tredavious White, formerly of the Buffalo Bills and Louisiana State University, quite a talent. And, you know, he's well known in the AFC East and the AFC and certainly in Buffalo. The Mafia loves this guy. The Bills Mafia, I mean. But let's get to know him as Ram fans. 5'11", 192 pounds, out of Shreveport, Louisiana, he committed to LSU as a wide receiver on a roster that included Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry at the time, so he converts to cornerback. Played alongside Jamal Adams back there, actually, in that secondary. He was a consensus All-American in 2016, first-team All-SEC in 2016 as well, and the year prior to that, second team, all SEC. So it comes out in the 2017 draft. What did NFL.com have to say about him? Gave him a 6.70 ranking. And that's basically saying this guy is a surefire NFL starter from the get-go. And that's what he was. They called him a premier mirror and match cornerback. One of the best in the game. Has the feet athleticism and instincts for prolonged coverage responsibilities, and his twitch will always have him near the throat. That's what they had to say about him. And what did one regional scout for an NFC team say? I don't know who this was. Could have been the Rams, actually. He's kind of soft, but he can cover. He's not really what our team looks for because we play so much sub packages, and he would have to be a better tackler to be on the field that much. He's a fit for what some teams do, though. Like I said, he can cover. And he has proven that is the case, at least the latter part of that. I think he can tackle as well. 2017, his rookie year with the Bills, started all 16 games and recorded 69 combined tackles, 18 pass deflections, and four interceptions. By the time 2019 rolled around, he had started to get some real recognition, ranked the 47th best player in the NFL by his fellow players, and in 2020, named second team All-Pro. Things took a turn for the worse in 2021. On Thanksgiving Day against the Saints, suffered a non-contact injury, turned out to be an ACL, and he was out the rest of the year. In 2022, did what he called a slow roll recovery. He appeared in six regular season games and both of the Bills postseason games as well, started all of them. But then in 2023, a week four game against the Dolphins, tore his Achilles tendon and again done for the year. At least it was early in the season, so he should be ready to go. So a summary of his career, 2017 all-rookie team, 2019 Interceptions co-leader in the NFL, two-time Pro Bowler, second-team All-Pro in 2020, first-team All-Pro in 2019. But because of the injury and really serious salary cap concerns for the Bills, I think they're $40 million over. Given that and the injury concerns, the Bills released him on March 13th. On his career, 311 tackles, five forced fumbles, five fumble recoveries, 68 pass deflections, 18 interceptions, and one defensive touchdown. So what does he bring to the Rams? Well, he might be the best flat-out cover corner the Rams have had. Jalen Ramsey's right there, too. Ramsey, actually a little more versatile, can come inside and play that star position. Tredavious White is probably going to be asked to take away one side of the field, matched up against the number one receiver for the most part, I think. Darius Williams on the other side raises some questions about the entire secondary. Where does Kobe Durant, Russ Yeast, and Darion Kendrick fit in with these three new additions now, right? Cameron Curl, Darius Williams, and Tredavious White. Man, if these guys are all healthy and good to go, and the only question in that regard is really White, this is three pieces to what could be a very, very good secondary. So that's where I see him fitting in. He'll be our number one corner. Hey, you know, I had my shopping list of what the Rams needed. And one of the items on that list was a number one corner. They signed Darius Williams. And you know what? I guess I crossed that off the list too early. 
we finally did get our number one corner. We have a number one corner and a number two corner. And wow, we have some incredible depth on this team as well now. Trey Tomlinson, Darion Kendrick, Kobe Durant, Sean Jolly, looking pretty good. And I still think we're going to draft a corner. But that's my summary, my player focus on our new cornerback, Tredavious White. Welcome to the L.A. Rams. And who was that running back the Rams drafted in the first round of the 2000 draft? Trung Candidate out of the University of Arizona. Played three years for the Rams. 98 carries for 495 yards and 6 TDs. Also had some receptions. Moved on to Washington, where he had 600 yards rushing in his first year there, surpassing his three-year total with the Rams. But that was the end of his NFL career. Trung candidate. And that was a pick that was widely panned. Why are the Rams using a first round pick on a wide receiver? I was actually excited about the pick. Anytime my team picks a skill position player, kind of overreact, thought it was going to work out for the Rams. The next Marshall Falk, this was a Mike Martz pick. Obviously, it didn't really work out. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.